So we'll do roll call first. Um, Emma Cornwell. Hi. Hi, Emma. Uh, Linda doesn't seem like Linda's here right now. Or Rodney. Um, Councilor Mary on the barge. Here. Kathy Mary. Here. Marilyn Claire. Here. Amy Sugihara. Here. Okay. Hi, Amy. I am here. Hi, Amy. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with public comments, if we have any. <coughs> Anyone have any public, any um, comments? Okay. Um, so we'll, next we'll move on to the approval of um, the previous minutes from May 9th. Motion to... Okay, I'll second that motion to approve. <clears throat> Emma, do you approve of the minutes? Um, I do, but I'm also not sure if I can because it was at the last meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're that's, you're, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, um, may, uh, may Council of Barge, do you approve? Yes, because I brought it forth. Move to approve it. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't know if I had to still ask you or okay. not. Okay. Okay, Kathy? Yes. Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and it looks like Michael Martin is not here today, also. I didn't call his name, but maybe he'll, maybe he'll come later. Okay, I'm um, so... Probably Rodney, too. Yeah, he might show up still, also. Hopefully. Okay, so next item is to review the Talbot House at Smith College request for variance. From... Excuse me, Jeremy, can I vote yes on the minutes? Oh, I'm sorry, Amy, I didn't mean to skip your name. I was just like That's okay. moving fast. Amy, yep, do, you, okay. do, you, do you approve of the minutes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay, um, next we're going to review the Talbot House at Smith College. Um, the request for variance from the MAAB. Yeah, so Jeremy, uh, Thomas is here, um, and I have made him a call. So Thomas, if you need to um, uh, present anything, you should have that ability now. Okay. Years. Thank you. And I, I'm joined by our um, intern, summer intern, Molly New from Smith College. She's a practice intern. So she's uh, looking under the hood and seeing what we do. And we're very happy to have her. She's one of several interns we've had from Smith and they're all wonderful. Um, so uh, let me give an introduction of myself and our firm and the project of probably a 10 minute presentation. Stop me anytime if you have any questions, but it's prepackaged and then we can have a discussion about it. Um, my name is Tom Hartman. I'm principal here at CNH Architects in Amherst. Uh, we were formed in 1989. We work all over New England and New York. We do lots of work for Amherst, Smith, Williams, UMass, Colgate. Um, so that, that's kind of our institutional clientele. Um, we've worked at Smith College since 2010, I think, and done many, many projects. Um, this project, uh, Talbot House, um, is an interesting one. Um, so it began as a window project, and Laura Fitch um, was the architect who was selected for that project, and she tragically passed away on January 1st. Um, so we were asked to take on the project and to continue to develop it. So um, it began as a window project. Then with the campus work, you may have noticed that Smith is doing, they're converting their steam distribution system to be ground source heat pump systems to reduce their emissions. So this just involves all kinds of mechanical work inside the buildings to be done. And so the combination of the window project and the mechanical project triggered um, compliance with 521 CMR which is the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, have you participated in the variance process before with the Access Board? Anybody? Okay. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to, I, I, I have personally, yes. You have personally, Marianne, you have as well. Okay. Oh, definitely. Okay, 
So I'll give kind of a, an overview of what that means, but I'm asking you to hear this project for one specific purpose, which I'll outline as I go through this. But so what happens with the building is if you are doing work over a three-year period that exceeds 30% of the assessed value of the building, not including the land, you need to fully comply with the architectural access board. Okay, there's a process in place for variances. And the basis of a variance is to um, establish what's called impracticability, which means that the cost of the proposed measure exceeds the benefits to people with disabilities, okay? And so um, that's the only basis that you can get a variance for. And we've already been through the process, which I'll show you in a minute with the architectural access board. So for example, we asked for a variance not to provide a, an elevator full stories in the building because the number of accessible bedrooms on the campus far exceeds the required number of bedrooms that are accessible by elevators and so forth and so on. And so we go in our application, we say, you know, this is gonna be, I'm gonna make the number up $500,000, but we're gonna make the ground floor accessible. So they've granted us that variance. And there were, there were many, I'll show you the application here shortly. Um, so that's the context of it. The variance in particular that I'd, I'd like your opinion on relates to providing a ramp, an entry ramp at the front door the front porch on Prospect Street, the, the Prospect Street porch. So um, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so here's Talbot House right here. Here's Elm Street, here's Prospect Street. For reference, here's the Campus Center right in this location here. So we're, we're close to the, to the main heart of campus, but we're not on the main campus. Um, so this is the building now. As it was taken, you can see that this is the porch. So there's a series of steps that go up. There's a step into the building. Um, the side of the building is like this. So this is the sidewalk on Prospect Street. There's currently a walkway that goes down and over down to the lower level. What's interesting is in this door right here, that's called the bike kitchen. And this is a um, function of the campus that's open to everybody on campus. It's essentially a bike repair shop or a loaner shop. So right now there's no pedestrian via, um, accessible entrance to it and there's no sufficient accessible parking down at that location. To the left here, this photograph is a school which is mostly in this lot. Um, so this is what the variance looks like. Um, I won't go through it all, but essentially you describe the project, um, the existing layout of the building. What's important to know is that lower level, the same level with the bike kitchen, which is right here, is where the majority of the common spaces in the building are located. There's a kitchen down on the lower level. There's a large lounge recreation room. There's a laundry room. And there's actually a couple small uh, bedrooms on that level as well. Um, on the first floor, here's that, front, that porch on Prospect, there's a living room, there's a parlor, and then there's other bedrooms and um, currently non-accessible bathrooms, which we're gonna renovate. The upper story um, typically is, as you imagine, in a dormitory, bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yep, we can hear yeah, you. We can hear you, Michael. Okay, I'm showing a bit late, but I got look at the time, get the right thing. So I'm in the meeting now. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Michael. Okay, you're welcome. So just to show you, so this is essentially what the application looks like. Um, we made the request to, one of the requirements when you trigger compliance is that all entrances must be accessible. So the one we'd like to talk to you today is we are creating an accessible route down to this lower level where the common area is. We're gonna modify the prospect porch and we'd like to seek relief not to provide an entrance ramp up to this level, which I'll explain. Um, so here's the decision that comes back. 
And the access board essentially says, yes, we've granted you relief on the entrances. However, they order us to complete the mass historic ADA process because we've made um, a, a, a request that to put an architecturally appropriate, historically appropriate entry ramp on this building is impractical. It exceeds the cost compared to the benefit, which is what I'm gonna um, explain and hope that you agree with, with what we're asking for. Um, ultimately, at the conclusion of this meeting, if you're inclined, we'd like a letter to support our application to the Mass, to Mass Historic. Um, and so let me show you um, the work that's being done already and just make sure you can see this, is outside the building, we're modifying the sidewalk. So it's compliant down to the bike kitchen. We're gonna create an accessible parking space at that level so that if people are coming from further off site, there's a, there's a place for them to park if they're in a vehicle. We're gonna modify the kitchen and the, the bike kitchen entry door to be accessible. That's some masonry work. Uh, the common area entry doors are already accessible. At the prospect porch, we're actually going to raise the level of the porch so that it's accessible from the interior. So that if there are people gathering on the front porch, a person could join them in a wheelchair on the front porch. We, in, on the interior, we're going to provide a Lula, which is a limited use, limited access elevator. It's an elevator essentially between the lower level and the first level so that though all those common spaces are interconnected. Okay. Um, we're designating three rooms to be accessible sleeping rooms designated as accessible. We're modifying bathrooms on the lower, and I'll show you a plan in a second, on the lower level um, to have a transfer shower, a three foot shower. We're modifying the kitchen to be accessible. On the first floor, we're providing an accessible bathroom with a roll in shower. We're doing all new handrails on all the stairs all the way up through the building so they're compliant handrails. And we are replacing the lever handle hardware on the sleeping room dormitory doors. So it's, it's a substantial amount of work that, that has been triggered and is already in the project budget and, and is being proceeded with. So just so you can see, this is a lower level plan. Here's the bike kitchen. There's the rec room. Here's the Lula elevator we're gonna provide. Here's the bathroom that we're modifying with the transfer shower for this accessible bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then on the first floor, here's where the Lula comes up. Modifying this bathroom to be accessible here, two more non-accessibles adjacent, two bedrooms with appropriate closets and so forth. And it's off the page, but here's the porch where we're lifting it off. Um, we just did this at Parsons House, which is being fully renovated. It actually works really very well. Um, so, and here's the proposed site, site plan. So here's Prospect Street, here's the, here's the sidewalk. We're proposing increasing the length of that accessible walkway and then finishing it off with a ramp, one in 12 with the handrails that comes down to an accessible parking spot and entrances, two entrances into this lower level with the common area. So essentially our logic is we're, we're providing a fully compliant accessible entrance to where the common areas are in the building. We're making that porch on Prospect Street accessible. So all we're really talking about is the vertical distance between here and here, and what is the cost of doing that? Okay, so uh, just a couple of numbers and a couple of dates. So the assessed value of this property is $2.9 million. If I take 30% of that, that's roughly a million dollars. The, and this number assessed values are they're bogus. <laughs> I mean, um, the insured replacement cost on this building is about $12 million. So the assessor's office doesn't collect taxes. So they have no interest in driving that number to be a market um, relative. The project at hand is about $7 million over two phases. The first phase is being done this summer. It's exterior work only. The second phase starts in January, all the accessible modifications I described. 
and then every room being provided with new mechanical systems and door up, you know, there's a, there's a, a lot of work that's going on. Um, so the process that I need to go through to comply with the mass historic ADA process, I haven't done this in several years, but, but I've done it. It takes a while, but essentially I met on the 22nd of May with the Northampton Historical Commission and gave a similar presentation. Mm -hmm. um, they concluded that the lowest cost entry ramp that I'm gonna show you would be architecturally detrimental to the building, to the historic element of the building. So that's one of the elements that goes into this application, which is called a project notification form. Um, so we send the letter to Mass Historic. We say, here's the project. Here's a description of it. And then we basically also include this form, which describes the owner, the contact person, you folks, and then any comments that you would like to offer. This is where your letter comes in. Um, and you know whatever your opinion is on the matter, uh, please share it as it is. Um, you know that, that's, that's what it is. That's the process. Um, so any questions there? I'm going to go through a couple of design options on the entry ramp, and then we can fold into a discussion. Does that all make sense today? Yeah, I have some questions. OK. Kessler. Um, the Lula elevator, that is going to start from first floor up to the second floor, correct? Correct. OK. Also, too, what I'd like to know is, what is going to be the width of the sidewalks that you're going to redo over? Uh, I believe they're at least four feet wide, maybe wider. And and we're doing, let me bring it up. We're doing, um, we're not redoing the sidewalks per se. These are the sidewalks. Right. We're making a private accessible walkway down here, which I think only needs to be three feet wide, but we'll probably make it a little wider than that for plowing and so forth. Okay. If I just have concerns about a three foot sidewalk versus a four foot sidewalk, because some of the wheelchairs say from wheel to wheel are 48 inches or depending. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we put a little more on the minimum that's required. Okay, um, so all the doors throughout that building are going to be operated by remote, correct? They just no, them. no, 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 no. The all the doors, up, all the doors are going to get compliant hardware, which means they're lever handle hardware on the sleeping rooms, as opposed to knobs. They currently, I mean, the building was built in 1909, so they have round knobs. Uh huh. So with access, you have to be able to o operate the door with the closed fist. Okay. All right. Um, so Hello. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, one quick comment <laughs> as someone who formerly sat on the access board, ramp is the maximum of one in 12 least yes. possible yes right and it's always advised don't do one in 12 because any shifting over time you may become non-compliant so do some greater extension to reduce the slope as possible if the uh if the commission supports correct correct yep we never design it right to the minimum that's a bad strategy <laughs> Good. Okay, so I'm going to just walk you through some design options so that you're aware we've thought about this. We've, you know, we've done our homework on this and some examples of other work we've done. I'm going to give you rough orders of magnitude of cost of, of things. Um, so just for reference, here's the existing building as in a rendering format. That's what we're working with. So Here's a, a floor plan. And, and I think it's really important to understand, you know, 
we're three foot nine inches between the first floor level and the grade. That's about 52 feet of ramp. It's a lot of ramp, not even walkway ramp, like at mm -hmm. one in 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the elevation. Now here's a little rough sketchy sketch mm -hmm. of what that looks like. Um, if I was going to design the lowest cost ramp, which is the standard of what we're trying to establish here that, you know, this is the lowest cost solution. It looks something like that. Now, again, yellow here, we're lifting the floor of the ramp up to be level with the first floor. So now this space is entirely accessible, the space of the porch. So what I would do is I would come out with a landing. I go down, have another landing, come over. Okay, real simple. That's what it looks like. I don't like it. It's not good. It's not a good design. Um, and essentially, that's what it would look like. Okay. It's, uh, as we would say in architecture school, not so nice. It functions yeah. per functions perfectly well, but it's not the way that I would want to communicate a, a thoughtful design architecturally for this particular building. Um, is it, is do you mind just being a little more specific on what you don't like about it? Um, yeah. yeah. I think that um, this is a completely 100% symmetrical elevation, right? So, um, you know, everything about this elevation runs symmetrically right from the center of that building. And so as I think about a design I wanna bring to this building, I want it to be somewhat symmetrical, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, but if I'm, if I'm essentially putting on, um, the lowest cost ramp, this is the way to do it. I cut the stairs in half. I can build this for about a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Which in the context of this project is not a large amount of money, but the solution I'm going to show you of what I think architecturally is appropriate is three to four hundred thousand dollars. And that be, that really starts to, to, to eat into, frankly what can be spent elsewhere on campus for access improvements in, in all frankness. Um, so here's, um, let's see, this one, I'm gonna show you this one. So this is Washburn House. This is on the main campus right behind College Hall. So we renovated this building in 2019. This is what it started with. There was originally a front porch on the building. You can see the brick, the shading of the brick where that porch used to be. Mm -hmm. And sometime in the 1980s, they did something very similar to what I just showed you as a solution concept. And so what we did, immediately we thought we have to put that front porch back on the building. You know, we let's rebuild that front porch. Now our vertical distance that we had to go up in this building was about half as much as we're looking at a Talbot. And because we were rebuilding the porch, we were able to tuck this ramp into the porch structure and still have some usable space left over on the, on the porch. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's, no, it's no coincidence I'm showing you a picture with the bright sun on it. So you can see, here's that entry to the ramp right there. So architecturally, it's it's discreet, it's appropriate, it's functional. Because we were rebuilding the front porch to begin with, it was cost effective. Okay, that's a good is that's a good solution concept. Mm -hmm. No concerns whatsoever, really. Um, now the problem. Can I give you an amen on that? Nicely mm -hmm. done. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I can't do that here. I don't have enough room for 51, 52 feet of ramp without entirely rebuilding that front porch, which now you're talking a half a million, three quarters of a million dollars, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So, you know, once I get, I do my thinking with this, just so we know. <laughs> okay, so not enough room for that solution concept. So here's another one. Okay, so this is at Amherst College. 
This is their service building. This has the police department. This has their service desk. This has the locksmith. This is a very um, occupied building. Most students on campus come to this building. There was not room inside the building. This was designed by Mim McKim, Mead and White as well. It's a lovely building. Again, symmetrical. But what we did was we built essentially a staircase off the front with a ramp and a walkway, but with brick and with granite and with concrete and with planters. And that is what this looks like. Um, and this was about $350,000 actual cost, okay? So this is, this again, if I have to work on a, on a ramp outside the building and wanna try and match materials, I wanna try and soften up the length that's required for the, the, the ramp, I wanna change the materials so it doesn't look like I stuck this thing on the side of the building. That's really what I'm trying to avoid here architecturally. Okay, now here's, here's what I would design if I, if I was gonna do something that I think is architecturally appropriate. Here's the front porch again, I've lifted it off. I'm gonna yeah, come uh, Tom, off. Tom, yep. I just wanna be mindful of the time. Uh, we do have other things on the schedule. Okay, um, I'll, yeah. two minutes. Thank you. So I would wanna lift this up, come, the, the green is ramp, the yellow is landings, I'd come down, I'd have a planter, level area here, steps, I'd break the steps up, you know, I'd, I'd wind this walkway and ramp around so that it, as I look at the building, it's symmetrical again. This again is about $350,000, if not more, just, just everything on the outside of the building. So essentially what we're asking for is with the scope of work that's being done, the only item in question um, really I'm asking your opinion on is, is it acceptable to not provide a ramp for those few last steps, these steps right here, so that frankly, um, because the access board has already granted relief that it is impractical to provide that well-designed ramp at 350,000. They want the opinion on the historical implications of doing something like this to the building. And so the map, the Northampton Historical Commission has already determined and issued, and they're going to issue a letter similar to say this is detrimental architecturally I'm interested to know your thoughts and ultimately what this would come to is a brief letter um, to, in this case, the Mass Historic Commission so that I can integrate it into the project notification form. Thank you very much. Is there time for questions? Um, yeah, I would just say, go for it, yeah. Uh, so Thomas, I'm curious to know how students use the front steps and Talbot House um, and how how many students use the front door to get in who live there, how many students go around to the, the, the ground level, the basement level to use it that way, you know, when there's a group of students and one person is in a wheelchair, what does that look like? How many students are using uh, or living at the Talbot House who use a mobility device? I do not have the statistics on specific numbers. Um, my understanding is that when students who do not live in the building are coming to the common areas or to the bike kitchen, for example, they're, they're obviously going to go around to the side and enter on the lower level. And part of our justification is since we're making these improvements already, to that lower level to make the bike kitchen accessible for the entire campus, we wanna take advantage of, of that um, allocation of resources. If someone is coming from the main campus and they live in Talbot House, they, they most likely are going directly up these stairs into the building. Mm -hmm. um, I can get you data on who's scheduled to live in this building um, who may have, mobility impairment, but my suspicion is there are better buildings on campus closer to the main campus where they would choose to reside. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then um, have you thought of a lift, you know, like an open air 
um, three sided lift instead of a ramp that could, yes. you know, go yes. on the side of the porch and just tuck yes. it in. Yes, and the pro that's probably two hundred thousand dollars and a maintenance nightmare. Ah, uh -huh, gotcha. They're they don't work after about five years unless they're undercover. Ah, uh -huh, gotcha. Okay. I guess so. I guess um, I just really have I don't really have mu much to ask at this moment, but mainly just confirmation that like so the the alternate solution you're talking about, other than the changing the stairs out front. The alternate solution would basically provide access to like everything out like everything else um that all the other students are like have access to um so this, uh, this, like is so is basically i'm just asking is like um if they both if if like the the side the alternate solution you're talking about is uh, provides equal access that the stairs do or like that the ramp would if you built this ramp out front does that make yeah, sense? It's hard, hard to articulate. Yeah, what, what we're what we're essentially um, suggesting is that if you don't build this this ramp on the front of the building, mm -hmm. and you utilize the entrance that's being provided on the lower level, and you utilize the lula that's being provided between levels, if you're visiting this building, you have access to all of the common spaces. Okay, that's entirely, that was my question. Yeah, including the porch on Prospect that is being lifted up. So okay. all we're talking about is these steps right there. Gotcha. That's, problem. that's the question. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh, Marianne, do you mind specify what, what you mean by that? That it's a problem? Uh, I, uh, I feel more safe about having a ramp put exactly where those stamps, the steps are somebody with a wheelchair or even somebody who has to use crutches and i know many people who use crutches for accessibility and i just feel that's unsafe having the steps like that and especially if they're living there and who are we to say next year who else is going to come in with a wheelchair or whatever whatever Say if they have their families coming and somebody's in a wheelchair. So they're going to go down the sidewalk into that back room down there and take the elevator to your room instead of using the entranceway <laughs> to the front of the building. Uh, also that, keep in mind we have we have been granted relief to not provide an elevator to the upper three stories. Right, I know you did say that. Yeah. Hmm. So that's my thoughts: stair steps versus a ramp. I was looking at the safety issue part of it. Thomas, do you mind um, just reiterating for us um, so we have it clear what exactly you're asking? So is it about this ramp not being architecturally in line or is it the uh, the 350 ramp? No, or are you I, asking us to weigh in in terms of access and Disability. Access, right. access. Okay. And I think the, the most appropriate thing for me to do would be to send Keith a memorandum that basically right. says, what I'm interested in is, is your opinion on not providing a ramp at this set of staircases, at this staircase. That staircase will have compliant handrails. Okay, so that's going to be made, that's going to be an upgrade that's made. But as part of the process with Mass Historic, they're going to look at the opinion of Northampton Historic Commission, and they're going to look at your opinion. Um, do you think? And, do you think that it would be possible to um, have like signage somewhere, like in that area, where oh, that would? Like, oh yeah, I'm that sorry. That would tell yes. you where to. That would tell you where to go, basically. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, and if if you're um, if you're a family coming to visit someone in this building, and the student lives in this building, and you're mobility impaired, I can assure you that Smith will work with the family to provide that parking spot for them. Gotcha, yeah. That's the purpose of that parking spot down uh, near the bike, at the bike kitchen. So, I, and I, you know, I understand 
it, the, but this is the process with buildings, existing buildings that trigger this compliance. And um, so what I'm trying to do is balance the improvements we're making with access, which are significant for this project, the architectural historic character of the building and the overall project budget. Uh huh. And how much of a budget are they giving you, Mr. Hurt? The, the budget is uh, about $7 million for the total project over multiple years. Ooh. And I can tell you $7 million doesn't go as far as it used to. <laughs> Um, one, one last thought, um, and I certainly understand the, the push pull and all the different factors that you have to consider. And I, yeah, I get that. Um, if someone was driving to the house, then, you know, so if I was driving to say, I had a daughter who was living in Talbot house and I was driving, I would want to park in that accessible spot. And then I would go in the entrance right there. I wouldn't go back around the walkway to come in, right? So it's really exactly it's You're, you would go right into the the lounge areas. You'd be right there's the Lula right there. You can go between the first and the and the lower level at your discretion. Right. So it really this affects not visitors who are driving there, but I guess visitors who are walking. You know, it it, it affects people who are. Um, using a mobility device or crutches who yeah. are, you know, going down the sidewalk. Right. So and, just... and if I can, you know, if, if let's say I start here, I still have some 50 plus feet of ramp to navigate here, which gets me to about here anyhow. Right. Right. So, and then at that where? point, I'm down. And where is that going? Um, this walkway here? Yeah. It's this gonna go going to go into that, right. I know where that's going, but you're saying about a ramp over here. Uh, what I'm saying is if I was going up a ramp here, yep. I'd have 50 plus feet to go up that ramp, uh -huh. which if I apply that 50 feet, I'm further down the walkway already. Okay. And I, I, I have another question. You're saying one parking space handicapped accessible plate? Correct. Why only one? Uh, there's actually zero required. Um, we're providing one to support our variance ap application. Okay. There's zero parking spots required. Okay. Um, Thomas, um, do you mind if I ask, um, are you hoping to get our approval today or like, no, no you're not, no. so we, we would have some time to discuss it? You do. So what I would like to do is I would send Keith a summary memorandum with some of this supporting information with the direct question that I'm asking for you. And then I'm hoping in the month of July to be able to submit it to Mass Historic. Okay, um, great. Yeah, no, I th this, this takes time and I appreciate your thoughtful deliberation on it. Yeah, I also really appreciate how much thought that, you, that you've all put into this. I think it, um, it looks really good to me um, personally. I, I personally, I know that if I were visiting that building, I would I would appreciate the accessibility that 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 you're that you're suggesting. So, it, yeah, like I mean, it's not perfect not having a ramp in the front. It's not perfect, but I feel like it's reasonable. What, everything that you are proposing, that's just my personal opinion. Thank so thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hartman. I want to be able to go over this very very carefully. Maybe we should make that, we can make that an agenda item. Oh, we don't have a meeting in July, but- um, no, We don't, we have, don't a have a meeting in August either. So um, uh, we sh if we're so inclined, um, it, it be, I mean, they're on time crunch. So we really should try to make a vote if we're gonna do that. Right. Is, I'll just ask first, does that do people feel comfortable voting today before I, just before I go right into a vote? I don't know. I, I want to work with Keith very, very closely on this. So Keith, maybe can I hear from you of how you feel about the designing part of this? The bedrooms, I don't have a problem. I'm looking at ADA safety here. So can you just explain everything, Keith? 
No, I, I mean, it's there's many factors here. There's the, the money, there's the compliance with the ADA, the historical component, there's doing the right thing, uh, you know, working with the um, Massachusetts Architectural Access Board, you know, he's in, they're improving compliance and they're reducing fossil fuel use on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, so overall, I think the the thought process is um, very very good, uh, and I would feel comfortable moving forward. If I were on the commission, um, I would make a re positive recommendation for this um, as someone who's worked with the Massachusetts uh, the historical commission. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think this is a, it's a, it's a thoughtful process and we're not, I don't think we're doing anything out of, out of, um, you know, we're, it wouldn't, it would be perfectly prudent to, um, move forward, I think. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, okay. How does that, how do people feel it? Do you mind if I just ask you, Emma, how you feel? Yeah, um, I sort of, ultimately I support it, but just wanna say that I kind of echo Jeremy about just posting a lot of signage about where the accessible entrance is and signage inside about the elevator and you know where the elevator goes and mm -hmm. yeah. But um, yes, I, I would be comfortable voting to support support this. Okay. How about Amy? How do you feel? Amy, how do you feel? Well, I wasn't quite prepared to vote today, but um, I can be same, um, same here. You know, strong armed into it. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I feel like I need to voice, and this is irrelevant, but I need to voice that. It is a horrible feeling to go to a building and to, to not be able to use the main entrance and to have to um, go around to find an accessible entrance. So I just, you know, the world is not built for mm -hmm. uh, people who use mobility devices. And so I just, you know, I just need to say that, like it's rotten to, <laughs> to, to not, have ramps everywhere right like it'd be nice to just rebuild the world <laughs> no. um, and i know that that is not feasible and it is going to take who knows many many probably hundreds of years before <laughs> um the world is you know accessible for everyone um so you know i'm imagining the students who are in a group of friends and one person uses a mobility device and the rest are walking and they go to Talbot House and maybe the friends are tuned in and so they all go down together through the ground floor. And hopefully, yes, right? But how horrible for a student to have to break out, you know, on her own to have to go around to meet her friends on the porch, right? Like it just, so I just, I guess I needed to voice that. Like it's just rotten. Uh, <laughs> you're laughing, Marianne. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. and and sorry, I, I know I'm speaking a lot, and I'm sorry to take this time, but um, that we have to weigh the cost of something and the value of is it valuable enough mm -hmm. for people with disabilities, like what is the value? How do you measure that, mm -hmm. right? And how many people over time are going to use a ramp and, you know, people's feelings, how do you measure that? And how much money should a college or any entity spend to make something accessible so that a main entrance is. So that, you know, I, I, I spent quite some time reading the documents and um, that sentence was uh, hard to absorb that, you know, this, the cost does not, the, the value does to, to people with disabilities does not outweigh the, 
the cost. And so therefore, you know, the cost isn't worth it. So I'm not, I, you know, I, I totally get it and I can be supportive of the project, but um, I needed to voice those two things. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. I do, and I do actually, like, I I 100% agree with you. Like, so I'm not like, like, I guess I, I just feel that it's, I, it's nice to see some progress being made with these old buildings, because so, so many times you don't see these old buildings become accessible. And um, so yes, I, I agree with you that like, we should like, hopefully this will lead to even more accessibility, maybe sometime in the future, they'll they'll build that ramp out front, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but like, I would like to see that too. But if we can, if we can make the building accessible now, um, in the way that he's suggesting, I feel like we should just, we should do that. Because like, it will benefit people. You know what I mean? But I, but the saying that I completely agree with what you said also. Mm. Because I also, you know, I, I experienced that all the time going to, going to places with friends and then having to like, separate from them to figure out where the entrance is. I totally get that. So yeah, but I'm also happy to hear that that you're making this building accessible. So should we try to if you guys want to go for a vote? I, I, wanna, yeah. I just want to comment on Amy and I thank you, Amy, because they always say that money is the evil of it all. And I I I agree with you here. And it's like it's going to be when, when will that happen where that dollar sign will be placed where it should go? So thank you, Amy, on that. Okay. Is there a motion to vote for this? Um, do people want to vote? Is that a yes? Everyone's being quiet. <laughs> Marion, Claire. Huh? You're calling on me first? Is that what you said? I'm asking if there's a motion to to vote. To, or should I make a motion? I make, I'll make a motion to vote. Does anyone second that? Seconded. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um. So, Emma, start with you. Uh. Yes. Okay. Um, Councilor Barge. Um, I'm really hesitant about this. I will say right now, what we're saying is there will not be a ramp put on the front porch, correct? Is that what I'm hearing from you, Jeremy? Yes, there will not be a, a front ramp um, on those stairs, but there will be a, a accessible entrance on the side and the walkway that he was talking about. So that would still give access to the same places basically, but you wouldn't be able to use the main entrance if you have mobility issues. Okay, yeah, yes. Okay, Kathy Murray? Yes. Marilyn Claire? Yes. Michael Morton? Michael? Michael's not answering. Um, Amy? I, I, vote, I vote yes. Oh, you vote yes? Okay, thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Amy? Sugihara? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Wait a minute, I'm here, Jeremy. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Linda. You came in late and then I, I just- I know, started. I'm sorry. Sorry, Linda, go, go for it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so sounds like we've approved it. Did you vote, Jeremy? Oh, I, I vote yes, yes. Thank you, sorry, I didn't say it, but I should say that, yes. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, uh, Keith. I'll follow up with you in the next few days and we'll make this happen. I would also offer that there are numerous projects like this that will be coming your way. And um, I am also happy to meet with you. I haven't met with you before as a practicing architect before. I've, that with the Amherst Disability Access Commission. But if you would be inclined, I'm happy to meet with you prior to submitting variances if I think there's a sticky wicket that you'd have an opinion on. Mr. Hartman, when do you think other 
another process of an application is going to come forth to the Commission on Disability? I think um, probably within six to nine months from now, there should be other variances going in. Um, other design teams besides my firm are working on some of these projects. Um, okay, because as you can I, imagine, they're all triggering this requirement. Right. I would like to meet with you to see the design strictly with you. I know you can come to the Commission on Disability, but being a city councilor, I would like to sit down with you and go over the language on it. Okay. Um, I would be happy to do that with you as part of the commission. Yep, because you can still come to the commission, but I want to have a meeting with you. Um, I'm not sure. The can, plans and so forth like that. I'll have to speak to my client about that. Well, uh, you do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thomas. you Thomas. Thank you, Molly. Yep, bye-bye. Thank bye. you, Molly. Thank you. Okay, so our next item agenda is, um, or sorry, ag uh, yeah, agenda item is to vote to approve the letter of support for the Massachusetts Trail Access Bill that Meg Bondar, um, Meg, Bond Meg Bondar presented to us last month, or was it two months ago? I forget, or last month, I think. Two months ago? Last month. Last month. Last month, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, motion to vote for that. I will make a motion to vote okay, on that I'll, bill. I'll second that motion. Okay. Emma Cornell? Yes. Motion. Uh, yes. Yes. Linda Kekos? Yes. Councilor Marianne Labarge? Yes. Kathy Murray? Yes. Marilyn Clare? Yes. Michael Morton? Yes. Amy Sugihara? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. So we have, uh, and um, we, we've approved the bill. Okay, Amy, go ahead. Can I just jump in? Um, there is a letter that exists that we could use if we wanted to, um, uh, on you know, for supporting this uh, bill that we could send to the chairs of the committee. Um, and I'd be happy to read it or I could so everyone knows what it says or I could send it to Keith or to you Jeremy or I don't know where we go from here in terms you're, of sure you're more than welcome to re read it um you and you wrote the letter right I or, did yep okay cool yeah if you want to read it go ahead okay um dear senator or representative we, the Northampton Disability Commission wholeheartedly and unequivocally support Senate bill S446 and House Bill H769, uh, quote, an act expanding access to trails for people of all abilities. As a group of volunteers who have or whose family members have a disabling condition, we understand from lived experience the challenge of access, accumulated stress due to a disability, and the unique value of being on a trail. People with disabilities are more likely to experience stress-related illnesses than our non-mobility limited peers. Being outside in natural spaces and having outdoor recreational opportunities are known to have a positive impact on physical and mental health, reducing stress and improving well-being. Yet those of us who would use and benefit greatly from unpaved accessible trails aren't able to access many. There's an enormous disparity between the need for accessible hiking trails and what exists. About half of our state's population requires trails to be accessible to be able to use them. This includes people with mobility limiting conditions, seniors and small children and strollers. Mm -hmm. Yet of the roughly 4,000 miles of unpaved hiking trails on Department of Conservation and Recreation land, only about seven and a half miles are accessible. The current funding for DCR trails does not reflect the state's population and does not address historical inequities. So the need for this bill is high. We urge you to support, oops, I lost it. <laughs> we urge you to support S446 and H769 and work towards a more equitable and accessible trail system that promotes health and wellness for all individuals. 
Thank you for your consideration and attention to this fundamentally vital matter. Sincerely, the Northampton Disability Commission. That's excellent, Amy. Yeah, right. sounds, sounds great. Right. And I also want to bring to your attention, which I sent to Keith Benoit this morning, Councillor Rachel Muir and I have a resolution, okay, that's coming into City Council on Thursday night. We've been working with Senator Kempiford, I mean, yeah, Senator Kempiford very, very closely and also with her aide very closely. It, it will be at City Council, Amy, on July 15th. So if you would like to come forth and speak or anybody, because this is very valuable here. Upon the recommendation of Councilors Marianne Labarge and Rachel Miore, a resolution in support of an act expanding access to trails for people of all abilities. Whereas, Universally accessible recreation trails provide safer, easier access to nature for seniors, people with various disabling and mobility limiting conditions, and small children who may need strollers or who are just learning to walk. And whereas nearly half of the population of Massachusetts are included in the categories above that would benefit from greater access to universally accessible trails and whereas creating accessible recreational areas is a stated goal in Northampton's climate and regeneration plan. And whereas being outdoors in green spaces can support a physically active lifestyle, which is positively linked to a physical health benefit, such as reduced risk of chronic illness and increase in life expectancy. And whereas access to green spaces can improve mental health, including social connection, ability to focus and reduce stress. Whereas people with disabling conditions and seniors are more likely to experience, experience issues with physical and mental health than the general population. And whereas people who need universally accessible trails have extraordinary limited opportunities to access natural green spaces, as only approximately 7.5 of the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, 4,000 miles of unpaid hiking trails are universally accessible. And whereas S446, in House 769, an act expanding access to trails for people of all abilities will help to make a more equitable trail system, address some of the environmental and social justice issues in outdoor recreation, improve public health, and increase access for people with disabling conditions to public land. Now, therefore, be it resolved that our parks and conservation lands are beautiful natural resources that everyone in Massachusetts should be able to enjoy and be it for the resolve that the city of Northampton recognizes the importance of ensuring equitable access to our parks and trails and systems. Be it further resolved that the administrative assistant of the city council shall send a copy of this resolution to Senator Joe Comfort, and believe me, she's very happy that we have done this. And so State Rep Lindsay Sabadosa also, Representative Michelle Sicolo, Senator Rebecca Rush, Senator James B. Elridge, Senator Edward J. Kennedy, Senator Michael O'Moore, Senator Michael F. Rush, Senator Bruce E. Tarr, um, Representative Daniel Cahill, Representative Diane Fernandez, Representative Christian A. Kasner, Representative Jennifer Belinsky Armini, Representative David Allen Robinson, Representative Carmen Lawrence Gentle, Representative Jessica Ann G Giano, Representative Daniel R. Carey, Representative Norman J. Oral, and Representative Nicholas A. Bogov. 
So that's it. And that's what's coming Thursday night. And as us two city councilors, we are asking two readings so this can get right off to the state house to every state rep and senator. Wow. Wonderful. Wow, thank you so much, Councillor. That so was awesome. So anybody on the Commission on Disabilities wants to speak, and I know, Amy, you will. All right, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Support this 100%. Thank you so much for doing You're this. Welcome, sweetie, anytime. So, so the letter supporting the trails bill from the commission, um, how how does that work, Keith? How, uh, how Amy, you... if you could, uh, if you send to me electronically, I, I can print it off, and then Jeremy and Emma, if you're willing, um, at the same time we can sign the, the letter to uh, for the Smith College thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. I'll have that by the week. Um, but I, I do want to note the time and we do, we have voted in favor of this. So, um, if there's no more questions, um, I, I have to, I have another city meeting here shortly. So I need to prepare for that. I'm not okay. trying to rush any decisions, but then the rest of the items are, well, we want to review the uh, flyer, which is pretty awesome, uh, for the meeting next month, but. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Th thank you, Amy, and 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 we, Emma, and I will will um, sign your letter and. Yeah, make I'll sure email get... it to you, Keith. Awesome. Okay. So um, we're going to review and and um, approve or not approve the flyer handouts for the Crip Kank movie and discuss dis distribution for that. So we'll start with the flyer. I uh, make a motion. What's that? Uh, what's that, Michael? make a motion to vote on the flyer yeah we're gonna do that in one second first we just need to look at it and make okay. sure everybody likes it i've looked at it i think it's oh awesome. okay okay cool well then let's uh, let's do it i'll second that motion michael um so we'll just go around uh, emma yes obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll add that emma and emma may, uh, helped to make the flyer she she was the main person that made the flyer great job Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Linda Kekos? Yes. Council LeBarge? We're voting on the flyer. Yes. yes. Just just yes. whether you like yes. it or not. Yes. Yeah. Kathy? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Michael Morton? Yes. Amy? Yes. Okay, great. And then we'll do one more for that. The handout, which we're which we'll ha we'll have at the um, event, to hand out to people. Oh, can I ask you how? What are you going to be doing with the flyers that you just showed? Oh yeah, well we were going to discuss that. Like, um, well I'm happy to help. Um, Me too. Ha hang them up around town. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sh share it online. I can do that. Share it on my Facebook and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it's great. We yeah. talked about sharing it with the chamber also, and and uh, Hampshire Life and those. Calendar. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, Linda. So just uh, tell me uh, how many you need to print, and I'll print those. So you know. Cool. And Keith, can you share the um, handout screen? The screen for that. I guess you don't have to, but. Uh, is it not the same one? Yeah. Oh, there's the one. There's another document um, that Kathy mm. made. Okay. I see. Oh. It's it's like a for it's a handout for what when we're at the event. So the first flyer is like a promo flyer promoting the event, and then the handout is for when people come, we'll have something to give them, okay. which is basically just like a kind of just like introduction to who we are as a commission and what we do as a commission, just to kind of introduce ourselves to people that don't know that we exist. Would we yeah, be? Able I, to I see... don't think I have that. Yeah. Okay. I, don't um, have it I thought that I thought that we did. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Can you send it to us, Jeremy? Yes, I will do okay. that. But I'll help you, you know, distribute it anywhere. Okay. Is, I, is, I know Amy would like to do that too. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's okay with everybody else, like, um, it's basically just a description of, of the commission and what we do. No, I'm talking about the flyer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That is awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. 
Is there anything else anybody needs we need, we need to talk about? Uh, Jeremy? Yes. What, uh, do you need people? You probably need us at the uh, senior center when they show them. How do we go about that? Volunteering or whatever, showing up. I'm sorry. So ask one more time. I, I didn't quite catch so that. So the movie is the July 11th at the senior center, right? So yes. You as the as the members of the disability committee being there. Oh. There. Yeah. I mean, if you can make it, that would be great. If you can't, I mean, it's not a problem. But um, we, if you, you do need a quorum, right? We do need a quorum. Yes. Is oh. that is that right, Keith? Because it's yeah, because it's considered our meeting yes, for to. for the month. I mean, and should we be yeah. there early? Yeah. What about right. yeah, whatever time? Uh, so there's two questions. The the quorum, you know, if we're making a decision, yes, we need a quorum, but we can start a meeting without a quorum. Um, okay. The event just uh, you know set up. Jeremy's going to help me with the audio set up beforehand. So like a yeah. week prior, or so we're going to do a run through. So um, the setup will be all, all squared away before we get there. So you don't need to be there to help yeah. set up or anything like that. Okay. If you want to help greet people or just hang out, you know, you can be there a little bit early. But um, there is a limited amount of time that we have to the room. To, to, to the room so. so be there at 1 o'clock. Uh, that's the time we said we're going to be there, yes. Yeah, one thirty to 4, okay. Uh, yeah, you can be at 1 one thirty, one thirteen. That's fine. Right. Okay. What time to start? I thought it started at one. Uh, it starts at one thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Keith will right. be. We have the room at I one. I think Keith is absolutely correct here because we're going to be showing. This is an invitation at the senior center of that movie. So Keith is absolutely correct. You don't need a quorum for that. But I'm a little questionable, Keith, about the questionnaires after. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to check that out. We're, we're not voting on anything. We're not making exactly. any decisions. I don't think we're we just need to sharing. Have a form. Right. So. Right. Right. I'm going to jump in very quickly. One, because I had been told that I could help with this. Um, and I said, sure, I'd love to. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how I'm helping or if I'm no longer needed. So someone can just <laughs> let me know where I should be when. Um, otherwise, I'll just come and watch it. Oh, um, I, you to make um, sure you do. <laughs> but the other thing is that I'm looking at the calendar invite that I got from you, Keith, and it does say two o'clock. And That's I can't I change thought. that because it's your you're in control of that invite. So if that time is wrong, you're going to want to change it. And it looks like it was. Um, invited several people on that calendar. All right, well, I can change that. Thank you. Thank you. And Keith, I just have one quick question. Um, you you had mentioned before that there was going to be maybe something in the Gazette about the proclamation that the mayor is doing the proclamation for. And then you we, we had talked about mentioning the the July 11th event in that in that article. Is that can we still do that? Yeah, uh, no, the proclamation language, I mean, uh, gave that to her several months back, and she was absolutely uh, thrilled to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. just closer to July 1st, um, just, I'll just remind her about that. And uh, Do you need my so, help in any way? Like, I, I'll, I'm more than welcome, or more than willing to help if I can, if I can. Is she doing uh, it, Keith, the day of our media, I mean, our filming, or is she bringing that to city council? I will all get, her proclamations come to city I will get with her, but it is Disability Pride Month. Oh, so okay. it, to all me, right. it makes sense to do it on July 1st. That way, yep. for the full month, we can celebrate Disability Pride Month. Yes. Um, okay. So I will get with her on the proclamation, um, I don't think it will have um, the language. It won't have anything about the crypt camp, but if maybe the proclamation letter is part of a, of a post, then we could say, and as part of the celebration of this Disability Pride Month, the Disability Commission is therefore you know, having a meeting. Because, uh, you, you know, the, the proclamation, it, in one sense, it is 2023 July month, 
but that kind of thing kind of lives long um, and we don't want to have invitation stuff muddling up the language. Um, so it might be an addendum to the post, if that makes any sense. Thank you, Chief. Okay, cool. Anybody, um, let's see, so uh, we were going to mention that um, to give notice that the August meeting will not be not be happening. I think we might have already talked about that, but that's just wanted to mention. Will there be that. a July meeting? Um, the July meeting is is the event that we're planning. It's on July 11th, which is the second Tuesday of the month. So it's the same day as that our meeting would be. At the Senior Center, Michael. At the Senior Center. Hey, thank you. Yep, thank you, Michael. Okay, any other business not anticipated nope. before we before we adjourn? Could I mention something quickly? Yeah, please, please do, Chris. Yeah, Marianne, I don't know if you had any questions, um, but one thing I don't know if you've um, all acknowledged the loss of Laura Rocher, one of our finest, you know, most yes. remarkable um, disability advocates in the city, but I currently understand that there will be a memorial and the date at Smith will probably be October 1st. Um, that will be something I, I hope you all will consider turning out for. Um, in the meantime, with what you're doing with Crip Camp is wonderful. Of course, that's Judy Human, who we lost a few months ago. Um, but when we when we did Lives Worth Living a few years ago, sometime during the month, you may want to have with uh, uh, Bill Newman, um, get uh -huh. his show and talk about it. And the other thing I would think is uh, encourage uh, Monty to come down during the filming and see if you can get us uh, uh -huh. around 413, um, you know, all in that spirit of, uh, <laughs> you know, really um, spreading the word. That's a great idea. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, Monty's, okay. I love Monty. He's, he's great. Ask a question. Yep. Michael? Would you like me to take some pictures of the meeting on the 11th? Sure. Yeah. That'll okay, be I'll great. Take some, I'll have them ready the following week or whatever and mail them to you. I thought maybe if not photographing people in the meeting, they wouldn't want to be photographed, photographed the presenter in the film or whatever. Cool. That sounds great. Prince, okay, I hope I'll do that you and Judith can make it. <laughs> Oh yeah, we, we will try to get uh, to that one. Uh, but but M, you know the the date on the eighth at Laura's. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll see you there. Awesome. Motion. Okay, I think that means we're wrapping up. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, I second that motion. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody.